Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu for Java, and this is um, tutorial number two of Spring Framework. We're going to see inversion of control and dependency injection. The last thing we saw in the last tutorial was this graphic. We had uh, seen that the problem we had was that this component needed one of um, two instances, this one or this one. And to get this instance, it asked the container. For the instance, this generated a dependency between the class and the container. We said that with these techniques, inversion of control and dependency injection, we were going to get rid of this arrow, this dependency. How are we going to do it? The fact is that this object needs an instance of either the two objects, electronic delivery service or mail delivery service. That's why he's asking the container for it. That is why the object has to know about the container. What happens if the container gives the object to the instance? What happens if we invert the roles? What happens if instead of having the object looking for the container so that the container gives the necessary objects we have the container giving the objects directly how can we do this? in this class we could put a setter method and the container directly does a set of this instance inside this object this object then doesn't have to know the existence of, of the container. It's a, a really easy concept if we think about it. So now we could erase, we could delete this red line. Let's see how this works. Here is the code in which we're working in. As you can see here is custom relation office class which has the dependency taken from the container and the container which creates the instance. I don't know if we've uh, seen the main method already. This main method asks the container for the first custom relation office and the normal execution of the program starts. Let's run and see it. Let's clean the console, run as, have application. Okay, and here you can see it sends an e an mail for ordinary mail with this, this, and this, which was asked for in the main. Let's see if we can now do the inversion of control or dependency injection. The first thing we should do is solve the problem here in this class. We want it not to be dependent of the container. We're going to comment its dependency on the container. This should be null. To get the instance we create a method. I'm going to copy and paste it. This is the method to allow the container to give a value to this instance. Through the method set we give a value to the instance. Through this method, the method set method, the container injects the dependency we've got here. We go to the container and what we have to include is at the end of the method which fills the hash map we include a set. Uh, copy and paste. This set gives an instance, instance of delivery service to the class custom relation office. This instance delivery service was made right here. Okay, let's run it. Run as have application and you can see it works just the same. It's easy enough. Inversion of console was the technique at the beginning. It uh, wasn't very famous until an author 
of architecture books named Martin Fowler wrote about inversion of control and he called it dependency injection which makes really a lot more sense than inversion of control. Inversion of control is very general. This um, author defined, uh, when he wrote this book, uh, he defined three types of dependency injection, injections. We're going to see the three w he um, wrote about. The first one was with set, which is the one we have already seen. The, the number two with a construction and one with interface, that's the third, which I am not going to talk about because I don't know any framework which is using it. The one with constructor is the one which we'll see now and the one with set is the one we have already seen. I would like to mention another one which isn't in the book but Google Geese framework used it. This Google Geese is a Google framework of dependency injections just like Spring. It basically basically makes an annotation and the framework automatically when it sees an annotation it injects a value. It allows any attribute attribute to inject it. Injections through annotation will be explained later on in another future tutorial. We're not going to talk about um, these uh, injections through annotations now. Let's enter in the set and the construction. As we've seen, the set works all right. Let's see how the construction works. Instead of using a set here, we could use a construction with their instance as a parameter. We create here the construction, the constructor. Let's see. Here we want to create the constructor and we want to pass the instance as a parameter. Here we are. And we're going to write here this dot and we assign delivery service. Now we are not going to use this and uh, we we're not going to use this here and we are going to directly inject the instance he needs through a parameter. Here we are. We are not going to we're going to put here this by parameter parameter. Let's run the main okay run let me see run us have application as and you can see here it's as easy as the last way we did it if we now look at the container class we see that we can improve improve a lot first here this class has the hash map static here which is wrong and all the methods here you can see are static too which means we can create different version we can't create different versions of this container we have the objects which are going to be created hard coded in java we could keep all these objects really um in a file. We want to create all these objects we want to create, we can keep them in a file. We would read that configuration file and we would create the objects based on what the configuration file said instead of having the class hard coded. This way we wouldn't have to compile the project each time we change one class for another. For example, when we change this class for this class, we could just change it in the configuration file and we wouldn't have to recompile the application every time. This configuration file could also have the wiring, the link between the different instance. For example, this object needs 
this instance. So there is a, this instance. So there is a link. So we could write in the file these types of links. This is what Spring does. Spring is a container. The links can be defined in many ways, but the most famous one is XML. This Spring XML defines the components over which they'll be a new, the names which they'll receive in the internal hash map and the different relations between them. The wiring between the beans, uh, which can be through setter or through construction, and many things that we'll see. The last versions of Spring allow annotations. This is in the last version. Oh well, uh, I think um, we've seen all for this tutorial. Uh, I, I think we've seen plenty. And um, we'll see you in a future tutorial. Thank you.